Lee Greenwood, everybody, joins us now, country music star. He wants to talk to us about his God Bless the USA partnership with Trump. Lee, honored to have you on the program, sir. How did you come up uh, uh, with this, the, this uh, idea, and, and how did it get started here where you have these God Bless the USA Bibles in partnership with uh, the one and only Donald J. Trump? Thanks very much, guys, and nice to talk to you. Uh, we've actually been promoting the God Bless the USA Bible for three years, and uh, it sort of just came to me um, after I had sang in New York for a lot of immigrants who had became American citizens. They asked if they could use my song, uh, which I've sang for 10 different presidents, if, in the immigration film. And so a new citizen who comes in this country, and there are 1,500 of those swearing-in ceremonies a year in the United States to bring legal immigrants into the country. And after I, I started talking to some of them about America's history, and they were very uh, quick to tell me that they knew a lot about America because they had to study it for seven years before they become a, a citizen. And I said, well, then, are, are you a Christian? And I said about 70 percent of them are. And so what's wrong, then, with putting documents of our founded fathers with a Bible? And, uh, and we started that three years ago. Now, my association with the president, of course, you know that he comes on stage and uses my song as his entrance song. And I've sang for him several times. I am not afraid to tell you I'm a Christian and a conservative. So in that regard... His uh, entrance to the to the market selling the Bible has is actually not in a partnership with me, but with the company that sells the Bible. We're talking to Lee Greenwood. I'm a big fan. I I want to ask you uh, about some of your performances, but I want to mention this one in particular because I'm curious if people still bring it up to you. Uh, my dad is a huge University of Tennessee fan. I am as well. He was at the Sugar Bowl, 1986, when Tennessee played Miami. And you came out and sang, I believe, at halftime during that game. And obviously, From the Hills of Tennessee is one of the lines in your song. I'm curious if people still ask you about that. That's been almost 40 years ago now, uh, and, and that particular performance. And as a second part of that, what performance to you and or performances, when you look back on your career, do you consider to be the most iconic, the most impressive, the most, uh, from your perspective, enjoyable of all the many thousands that you've done wow that that's a great question and, and i would tell you first of all we yes we are fans of ut uh go Vols. my my wife actually was uh, in the system at chattanooga uh university of tennessee there and i've sang more times with the university of tennessee proud of the southland band than anyone else like 14 times that particular performance at the sugar bowl i remember like yesterday uh and we didn't win the national champion that year a championship that year, but we did beat Miami 35 seven and That's I right. sang at the halftime. That was probably the first time I'd ever sang God bless the USA in a stadium at a football game. Now, when we move forward and talk about those moving moments, um, we've done like 14 USO tours. I can remember singing on the USS Nimitz touring with Bob Hope and singing for the military all over the world. There have been places where I can't even tell you where we sang for the military. And it was a very moving moment, but I will say this, Right after the terrorist attack in in, uh, in America, and they, of course, brought down the trade towers, and then the plane went down in, in uh, Pennsylvania uh, with some wonderful, brave Americans, and then they also ran a plane into the Pentagon, which a lot of people don't even know about or remember. I, I sang at Yankee Stadium for the Firemen's Memorial. There were 330 firemen that died, and it was Bette Midler, myself, and Mark Anthony, who were the performers there at the at Yankee Stadium, that was a moving moment. And then we sang for the, for the policeman's memorial at Carnegie Hall, coordinated by then police chief Bernard Keurig, who is still a friend of mine. And there were over 100 cops that were killed as well. Then let's move to the fourth game of the World Series. Now, that was more important because it had such a, a wide audience. The ter one of the things terrorists wanted to do was to stop our way of life. And the first thing we wanted to do was say, you will not stop us from having sports events. It's the, what we entertain ourselves with. It's good healthy entertainment and and the competition between cities and teams is something we all look forward to so i wore the red white and blue jacket and you can google that find it on youtube it's the only time i ever wore that jacket for a live performance it is retired and will probably go to the hall of fame uh or the or the uh, science museum but but i wore the the colors of america because i wanted to make sure the world knew that me particularly who wrote god bless usa wanted to let the rest of the world know we would get up off our knees 
and we will sing for American pride. And that, that's why I wore that jacket at that particular time. We're speaking to Lee Greenwood, country music superstar right now. And Lee, um, obviously your song has gotten this, this new act, this new uh, phase, if you will, God bless the USA, because Trump uses it. And so it, it, it is very much associated in the minds of a lot of us uh, these days with Trump and the America First movement that that he is um, the center the center of and at the forefront of. I'm wondering if you just tell us, how did you come up um, with this originally? What spurred you on to write it? What was, what was in your mind? I mean, how, how did you decide, I'm just going to write a truly patriotic anthem that would stand the test of time for decades? It, yeah, um, you know, it, it's a long ride. I, I was raised in California on a farm. My father joined the Navy right after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, and, and I mean right after, like days after. We were living in Los Angeles at the time, so I was born in L.A. hospital. My mother divorced my father because he was in the Navy for four years and Merchant Marine for two years. I did not even know him until I was almost 20. Um, and, and that's not why I wrote the song. But let me just say, uh, the, my way of life, being raised on a farm by my grandparents, was something very special. Um, I spent 20 more years before I, I had the opportunity to find an audience for, for my career. And I spent those 20 years in Nevada alongside many great entertainers, one of whom was Elvis Presley, worked in the same hotel as I did. That was the Hilton in those days, now the Westgate Resort. And I always watched Elvis' show when I had a moment. And he would sing the trilogy, which was the uh, ended with the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Now, Elvis was very reverent. He probably could have been a preacher. And, and I, if you ask T.G. Shepherd, he will tell you. He's one of the TCB got, recipients of that necklace, uh, taking care of business, that Elvis gave to, to those people who were close to him. And when I heard him sing that song, I said, if I ever get my own career, I want to close my show with the trilogy, just like Elvis did. Uh, so fast forward, I get my career. We explode on the scene as a writer, singer, musician, and a touring artist. And we did every doghouse, outhouse, and roundhouse for three years. And after the release of three or four albums that put us on the charts consistently for five years, I wrote God Bless USA just because I'm in my bus one night leaving a concert, and I'd seen some military people, uh, some Marines who had presented the, the, the flag that night and, and the national anthem. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe it's time, instead of doing someone else's song, I write my own song. And, and I went ahead and did it. And I wrote, I wrote the closer. I took it home to my producer, Jerry Crutchfield. It was hard to do any demos because we were on the road so very much. So I made the demo in my bus. I had my own recording studio in the bus. And, and, and he looked at me and said, Lee, I don't know that this is a good idea. Uh, but if you want to do that, we'll put it on the album. The album was called You've Got a Good Love Coming. It was a 1985 release for summer. When I took the, the album to Universal in Los Angeles... It was Irving, Irving Azoff, who ran Universal and all of MCA records and movie, movie division, who actually made the call to have God Bless the USA released as a single that year in 1985. Had they not done that, I don't believe anyone would ever have heard it. It would have been buried in the album. You Got a Good Love Coming would have been a hit because we had a video we filmed in the London train station with a couple of, a couple of people who made um, cameo appearances. But lo and behold, made the song on radio and the only mistake they made was it peaked before july 4th in 1985 because they released it a little too soon so you know there's the story of it lee how many presidents have you had the good fortune to meet in your career i bet the answer is a bunch of them and how yes, would you assess trump who i think it's fair to say you want to see back in the white house in 2024 compared to the other presidents that you've had the good fortune to meet over the years um, let's wind back when I was, uh, 16, I was a drum major for my high school marching band in Sacramento, California, when at that time, vice president Nixon made a visit to Sacramento and I'm standing next to the airplane when he stepped off the air aircraft and shook hands with me. That was the first dignitary I had ever met. I then helped Ronald Reagan, uh, for his gubernatorial campaign in California. And I was still a struggling musician. After I moved to Tennessee, I get my career, and then USA begins to be known as Ronald Reagan's song uh, in his movie. And then I met Vice President Bush at the time with a White House performance. 41 became my very close friend. 
Um, and, and I still admire him and Barbara uh, and the way that they conducted their lives. Don't forget, he was a Navy uh, flyer. He was a hero in the war, uh, was rescued by a submarine. Uh, he was the head of the CIA, and he was very smart. And I believe when those two, Reagan and Bush, were together in the White House, uh, Reagan learned that Bush was smart. Bush learned that Reagan knew how to entertain an audience. And, and, and I think that's what was this, what was so, so unique about it. All right. So Reagan gets out of office, Bush becomes president and we open the Ronald Reagan library in Simi Valley, California. Johnny Grant, the mayor of Hollywood knows that I was a favorite of Ronald Reagan's. He wants me to sing in front of five presidents and I will name them for you. It was Nixon, Carter, Ford, Bush, and Reagan, all their wives and Lady Bird Johnson, whose husband had already been deceased. So I sang in front of those five. Forward another 10 years, we have hurricane relief at Texas A&M, and uh, I sing again for five presidents in, in, in this particular instance. I've emceed the event as well, and I'm singing for Presidents Obama, Clinton, Carter, and both Bush presidents, all sitting in the front row. And I have that picture on my website, if you want to go look at it, LeeGreenwood.com, showing my wife and I standing behind the five presidents who all posed for pictures with the entire cast. But it's really interesting that when you are around a president and Secret Service gets a handle on you and they, and they, and they understand who you are, a visual contact, then it's not so strict. But at first, of course, you have to clear all of the fences you have to go through, all the identification procedures once that's done. You're just kind of a member of the family backstage. And, and I've had so many experiences, and we could talk a lot about that as we go along with all of the presidents. Uh, of course, you know I was in the National Endowment of the Arts Council, appointed by uh, President Bush 43, and I'm now a trustee of the Kennedy Center, appointed by President Trump. Lee Greenwood, country music superstar of God Bless the USA fame and so many other songs. LeeGreenwood.com. Go check out what he's up to there. Lee, thank you for being with us. Appreciate you. You're welcome very much. God bless the USA Bible dot com. There you go. You know, the newest sponsor in our program may be the fire ministry's best kept secret, but not for long. Not if we have anything to say about it. Bear Creek Arsenal is their name. They make incredibly well-made firearms. Look, I appreciate shooting. I go out. I try to work on my skills all the time and try to get more precise, more tactically proficient. Uh, and I've got a pretty good collection of firearms. I could tell you. I've got an AR, for example, that retails for about eight times what a Bear Creek Arsenal uh, AR goes for. So just understand, we're talking about a dramatic change in how you should be thinking about the price you need to pay for a really good rifle, really good pistol. Bear Creek Arsenal makes world-class products at unbelievably good prices. I mean, when you see it, you're going to say, I've got to get myself one. I've actually got a couple of them here at home already, and I'm going to be getting more. Once you get out to the range, as I have with Bear Creek Arsenal, I'm telling you, you are going to decide that this is your favorite new firearm maker. You've got to give them a shot, give them a chance, see the prices, see the craftsmanship at work here. Um, the reason they're able to do this, they have no middleman fees. They're all about getting you the best firearms you can possibly get and at a price point that you won't even believe until you try it yourself. They really know what they're doing. Discover Bear Creek Arsenal today. Go to bearcreekarsenal.com slash buck. That's bearcreekarsenal.com slash buck. You don't need to pay for one of those, you know, super fancy, incredibly expensive ARs. I've got one. I know it's not worth that kind of a price point. You get just the same quality, but at a fraction of the price with Bear Creek Arsenal. Go to bearcreekarsenal.com slash buck. Use my name, Buck, to get 10% off your first order. 